hey, man, this is insane. <laughs> what if someone argued, hey, uh, given uh, Jack Nicholas and why <laughs> Arnold Palmer and all the white men that built golf, it's important that Tiger Woods be replaced as the face of golf by a white person. They must look like the past. Uh, women's basketball needs faces of the future to be black. Enter uh, Juju Watkins and Hannah Hidalgo. That's who the other the player at Notre Dame was. And so she goes through a little long description here of Juju Watkins shooting a shot and blah, blah, blah. Uh, then she goes on with Clayton and Clark headed to the 2024 WNBA draft where she's projected number one overall. Watkins, the nation's leading scorer this season behind Clark, is position to become the face of women's basketball. She'll be joined by Notre Dame point guard Hannah Hidalgo, the other favorite. Uh, not lost on any power brokers in the game, both of these players are black. And in a game built by black women, it matters that the faces of the future look like the faces of the past. Steve, <clears throat> and I know this is a white woman writing this, but this level of blatant racism and stupidity. How did America's newspaper, there's no editor, there's no body at USA Today say, hey man, this is insane. What if someone argued, hey, uh, given uh, Jack Nicholas and <laughs> Arnold Palmer and all the white men that built golf, it's important that Tiger Woods be replaced as the face of golf by a white person. They must look like the past. H how is this being published? H how is this woman welcome in the field of journalism? I just don't get it. Well, I mean, look, she probably went to a leftist diploma mill, like most of them do. Um, she obviously is now invited to the barbecue, probably a lifetime pass. But this is why, Jason... When I hear of the newspaper business struggling or an individual newspaper shuttering its operations and dying, I used to feel bad about it. Now my reaction is, good, I hope there's more. But again, this is white guilt. This is what they want. This is why nobody trusts the corporate media or legacy media conglomerates anymore. And it's pandering. That, that's what it is. It's not journalism. It is pandering. And I, I find it interesting. So in boxing, we've been looking for the great white hope, or there's a perpetual notion that we need one. In college basketball, uh, because there's not enough of them, we need the great black hope. And let's be honest about it. One of the reasons why Caitlin Clark is so popular, it's not just her skill, that she is an outlier. But this whole notion that somehow there's a great replacement theory on the way, and we have to keep this game more or less black. Um, somebody needs to tell Ms. Schnell the game will always be black. I think basketball at its highest levels, men and women, will still be predominantly black. It, it, that's just the way it is. It's okay. We don't really care. I don't. Um, but this is just pandering. And quite frankly, I don't expect anything less from the USA DK. <laughs> I love that. USA DK. Uh, Thank you. Wow, Thank that, you. that's good. Um, Thank you. you. When we do a thumbnail, ahead. let's try to work Use USA uh, DK that's into that. But, but Steve... I'm going to slightly disagree with you. I don't think these sports are going to remain as black as they have been in the past. Uh, okay. I, I think that's, and I'm going to tell you why, though. I'm, I'm going to tell you why. As the destruction of the black family is going to impact, because there's this myth out here that, like, in basketball, that it's a baby mama dominated league, and it's really not, that a lot of the top black players come from two-parent families because it takes two parents to shuttle kids to all these AAU tournaments and all the stuff they do during the summer. It, it, it's, it's a group effort. It's a mom and dad effort. And so as the black family mm -hmm. continues to destruct, you're going to see less and less of our kids reach the top of even these athletic professions that 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 they used to. And so I I I find the entire 
discussion and, and the platforming of this level of stupidity, it, it's it's just troubling. And, 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 and the decay of newspapers, I, I get what you're saying, like they're getting what they deserve. But, but I'm not so sure because newspapers used to have standards and yeah. you used to have to like legitimately earn the right to voice your opinion. Remember in the day, Steve, that there would be beat reporters and reporters and they didn't yeah. offer opinions. No, now, they didn't. everybody, everybody offers an opinion, whether they're qualified, whether they're smart enough to do it, whether, you know, some people just don't have the capacity to say smart things on a consistent basis, well, s- smart and or provocative things on a consistent basis, and they end up tripping all over themselves and making fools of themselves in an attempt to be interesting. Jason, I also believe that the presence and the magnitude of social media has a lot to do with it. That if And a lot of journalists, I see this in boxing with the media, they pander or they don't want to say their true feelings or they couch their feelings or they soften their opinions to make sure that nobody attacks them online. And I'm at the point now that if I piss off a certain sect of people, I know I'm doing the right thing and I'm beginning to enjoy it. Same with you. Whatever you say, Jason, I get great joy out of going to your comments. It is unbelievable how many people you upset on a daily basis on Twitter. And that's the whole thing that many of these individuals, I'm not saying that they lack integrity, but they lack guts. And this is why they resort to pandering. And they believe saying something like this, number one, it really shields them from any claims of racism. And number two, um, they get all the applause from all the people they think is going to help them move up the ladder in terms of the media field. I'm going to go a layer deeper on on uh, my take on why, like particularly as it relates to women's college basketball. So she argues in her piece that many of the all-time great players previously were black. And they were big players. They were Cheryl Miller. They were Lisa Leslie. Yes. They were, you know, they didn't get the acclaim they deserved. And and so, and that uh, these white players from Paige Bukers and, and Caitlin Clark uh, to Diana Taurasi to Sue Bird, she's arguing that they are more skilled and play the game in a more relatable way and in a way that attracts fans. And and she's right. But this, again, goes back to my point of many of these white players come from two-parent families where mom and or dad is shuttling them to all these AU tournaments, specialized coaching, where they develop the skills. And then many of the great black players have been relying on their talent. Oh, I'm six foot three. I'm six foot five. I'm th- and those aren't skill, and it's not attractive or it's not interesting to watch a big person play women's basketball because they're just not very skilled, and it's not well, a beautiful style of play, and it doesn't attract the kind of attention. Well, Jason, I don't want to go all Korean Don Imus here, but I want to bring up that name again. You know, a women's sport I actually can watch. And I'll see it when I'm working out or I I have when I was at L.A. Fitness and be on the screen. Women's college softball, I actually enjoy what I watch. Now, I don't I'm not like you. I don't carve out my day. I don't look for the TV schedule of women's college softball (laughs) and set up my big screens. Okay, I'm not like that. But here's what I like about the game. The hitting is much improved. Not every game is a no hitter anymore. A double no hitter. That used to happen a lot when I was growing up. The hitting I'm just telling you, these girls are now driving the ball. They're getting the barrel on the ball, and they're driving it. The skill level, I'm just telling you, because the bases are shorter, these infielders have very quick hands. I know a little bit about baseball. They actually transfer the ball very well. Also, the pace of play is quick. The game is not monotonous. But here's the thing. These young ladies look very feminine. I mean, I'm just watching this game going, wow, these are nice, young, wholesome ladies. They they look nice. Like, these are the type that you could bring home to your mom. You take them to the prom and put a nice corsage on and hold hands and take a portrait of. 
It matters. I, I know it's an uncomfortable situation, but this is what we do on Fearless. They look aesthetically pleasing. That is a factor, Jason. I, I'm friends with TJ Hushmanzada. No, TJ and his wife. TJ, good receiver. They have two daughters. They have two daughters that played softball at LSU. Yeah, at LSU. Great players. And the investment in time that TJ and his wife did in developing, and you know, particularly TJ, developing these daughters is amazing. And TJ's daughters, just like you said, very attractive, very skilled, mm-hmm. very wholesome, yes. come from a great supportive family. It, it's, it's, I'm, these issues as it relates to women's, they're just so much more complicated than most people can discuss and talk about. Uh, again, this, this USA Today story, I just find very offensive, very stupid. It, it, it's like th- these media outlets and media, they're invested in promoting racial division. And, and, and it's almost like if someone wrote it, you know what? It's important that quarterbacks in the NFL remain white because white quarterbacks built the league. I mean, who would make that argument? But we can now make the argument that, like, somehow Caitlin Clark is bad for women's basketball. It's stupid. Like what you saw? Hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the full episode by clicking the link below.